Thank God with the reggae sound mixed in there. Amen. We thank God. Amen. We thank God. And I failed to mention, amen. Good to see Brother Joe Rankins in the house. God bless him. Been out for three weeks. Amen. And God has blessed him with a new child. Amen. God blessed him. Good to see you, Brother Rankins. Amen. This time we're going to turn it back over to, amen, the mighty, mighty men. Put your hands together for the mighty men.
Come on, don't let it die down. Come on, somebody. Anybody feel the spirit? Come on. Come on, give, come on, give God some glory. Sound like a faith break. Sound like a praise break right there, Lewis. Right there, praise break. Come on, come on, come on. Jesus, amen, amen. I feel the spirit, amen, amen. And you got to be in the spirit to feel the spirit, amen. We thank God, amen, amen. Just went on by his business, amen, Brother Sean, amen. And in the spirit, amen, amen. We have, we have 12 more seats left, amen, for the church van, amen. The van will be leaving at 1 o'clock. To get that 130, amen, or, or 110, and get that 130, amen. So if you need to rise, see Deacon Bibles, amen, to meet here at the church, amen. amen. We invite your attention to the book of Joshua, chapter 2, verses 1 through 14, and we're going to ask Josh to come read Joshua, amen. <laughs> Minister Johnson, come read his name, amen, amen. Joshua, chapter 2, as we stand to our feet. Amen. And that's the order of, order of our house. That we stand as the reverence of the Lord. That we stand to our feet. We ask that Brother Minister Johnson would read the scripture. As we all stand. Amen. Amen. Again, in reverence to God's word, please stand. As we read Joshua chapter 2, verses 1 through 14. And it reads, And Jesus, the son of Nun, sent out of Shittim two men to spy secretly, saying, Go view the land, even Jericho. And they went and came into the harlot's house, named Rahab, yes, and lodged there. My Lord. And it was told of the king of Jer Jer Jericho, saying, Behold, there came men in hither tonight of the children of Israel to search out of the country. And the king of Jericho sent unto Rahab, saying, Bring forth the men that are come to thee, 
which are entered into thine house. For they be come to search out all the country. And the woman took the two men and hid them and said thus, there came men unto me, but I wist not whence they, they were. And it came to pass about the time of shutting of the gate, when it was dark, that the men went out. Whether the men went, I want not. Pursue after them quickly, for ye shall overtake them. But she had brought them up to the roof of the house, and hid them with the stalks of flax, which she had laid in order upon the roof. And the men pursued after them the way to Jordan unto the fords. And as soon as they which pursued after them were gone out, they shut the gate. And before they were laid down, she came up unto them upon the roof. And she said unto them, I know that the Lord has given you the land, and that you, your terror is fallen upon us, and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you. When ye, come out, when ye came out of Egypt, and what ye did unto the two kings of the Amorites that were unto the other side of Jordan, Sihon and Og, whom ye utterly destroyed. And as soon as we had heard these things, our heart did melt. Neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and in earth be beneath. Now therefore I pray you, swear unto me by the Lord, since I have showed you kindness, that ye shall also show kindness unto my father's house, and gave me a true token, and that ye sh will save alive my father, and my mother, and my brethren, and my sisters, and all that have and deliver our lives from death. Verse 14. And the, and the men answered her, Our life for yours, if ye utter not this our business, and it shall be, when the Lord hath given us the land, that we shall deal kindly and truly with thee. Amen. 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 May God add a blessing to the reading and hearers of his holy word. Amen. Could we remain standing for near the cross? Oh, come on and sing it like the men. Mighty men, you can come down if you like. If you want to come down, you can't come down. Yes, sir. Come on. the cross. Why don't you take it up? Oh, sound good. My rapture soul. Come on, I need all the ladies. Every lady, sing the song. Oh, sound mighty good. Why don't you take it up? My rapture soul, my rapture soul. Mm. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I need, I need all the men singing. Everybody, everybody singing. Come on. Oh, Lord, thank you. Uh huh. Come on and take it up. Somebody good. Amen. Come on and bless the Lord. Amen. You may be seated in the name of 
Jesus, amen. And we thank God, amen. He's worthy to be praised, amen. Amen. Well, us just may be seated, amen. And amen. We thank God for the ooze, amen. Amen, amen. So we need all the ooze in Lakeland at 130, amen. It ain't going to sound right unless you're there, amen. We ask you come, amen, and be a part of a worship experience, amen. 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 Sister Edith gave me a pair of sunglasses that were left at the Relay for Life. Amen, amen, sister, amen. See me at the church, amen. Amen, amen. You hater blockers, amen. <laughs> we have them right here, amen. First given unto God to these, amen, preachers of the gospel of Jesus Christ and to these deacons and deaconess and to all of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. We, once again, we invite your attention to the book of Joshua, chapter 2, and we're not going to hold you long. We'll give you time to go home and refresh and up. Amen. But in the interest of time, look at verse 14. Turn your Bibles. To verse 14, Joshua 2, verse 14, and it says, And the men answered her, somebody said her, Our life for yours, if you utter not this our business. And it should be when the Lord had given us the land mm -hmm. that we would deal kindly and truly with thee. Our life for yours if ye utter not this our business if ye utter not this our business church just for a few moments as god give power we want to speak from this thought in business for the lord in business for the lord in business for the Lord. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. neighbor. So, oh my, neighbor. oh, my neighbor. Say, who are you in business for? Who are you in business for? I've got my Let us pray. Eternal God, we come to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your grace and we thank you for your mercy. Yes, God, we thank you for what you keep doing every night. Yes, man, you watch over us and give us protection Allow us to get up and to see another day. God, we say thank you for who you are and what you can do. God, we ask that you uh, go into the hospitals and nursing homes and do your mighty work. We ask God that you remember our good brother, amen, Deacon Steele. We ask that you go into the hospital and give him a comfort of mind. Give him a smooth soul. Help him understand that everything going to be all right. That it may seem dark right now, but joy is going to come in the morning. We ask that you uh, visit our sister Calvinia. Touch her, God, and hold her mind and give her peace. That it's only for a little while that the joy is going to come sooner or later. Now, God, we ask that you uh, bless those who was able to come to your sanctuary, to your place of worship, to give you honor and glory. We ask that we have come to worship you in spirit and in truth. We ask God that we have anything on our mind that is not of you, that you remove it in the name of Jesus. We ask God that we will come to worship you freely. Whatever bondage we're in right now, we ask that you release it in the name of Jesus. We ask God that you uh, open up our hearts and minds, that we will hear from you. God, control my mind, my mouth, my movement, my motive. But orchestrate your message. Somebody need to hear this word today, God. We thank you and we praise you in advance. And all of God's people said, Amen. in business for the Lord. Sister Garrett, in business for the Lord. Church stories told of this couple who would eat out every Friday night at this particular restaurant. I mean, this went on for about seven years. Deacon Young, they would arrive at this particular restaurant at 7 p.m. sharp every Friday night. But one Friday night when they showed up, they realized that the restaurant had changed its name to Larry Lovers Lounge. This is my story. Let me tell it. I don't want to tell it. 
they was kind of shocked because even though the name had changed to Larry Lover's Lounge, the owner was still working there, but he looked different. He walked different, and he had a smile on his face. So the couple called him over and said, Sir, I noticed y'all have changed the name of the restaurant, but yet you are still here. You still have a smile on your face. You, you walk different. You, you look different. And by the way, who is Larry? <laughs> the owner of the restaurant replied, he said, Larry lives up north. And I had the wonderful opportunity to meet Larry three weeks ago. And when I met Larry, he changed my life. He gave me a deal that I could not refuse. He said, if you let me run your business, you will still have a job. You will still eat every day. You will still be recognized. But there will be no more sleepless nights, no more heartaches and pain, no more staying up to 2 o'clock in the morning trying to figure out your bills. In fact, he even said, I got a son who's willing to pay the debt that you have already have, amen. So you ask me why I'm smiling. You ask me why I'm happy. You, you ask me why I have a new walk. It's because I was about to lose my mind. I was about to lose my job. I was about to lose my life. But when I turned my business over to Larry, he made everything all right. He said, the problems I used to have, I, I gave it to Larry. The bills I used to have, I, I gave it to Larry. The complaints I used to have, I, I gave it to Larry. He said, I don't know how you feel about Larry, but I thank God I'm in business for Larry. And church, I woke up this morning to inform somebody the problems you have, the sleepless nights you have, the debt you have, if you turn your business over to the Lord, how many know he'll make everything alright? If you give it to God, he'll make everything alright. If you turn it over to the Lord, he'll make everything alright. Touch your neighbor and say, I'm in business for the Lord. And here in our text today, we're going to see a young man a young girl, rather, who went in business for the Lord. Listen to me now. She went in business for the Lord. So as we unpackage this text, Deacon Gary, let's see what the Lord would have us to see. Look at verse 1. Verse 1 says, And Joshua, the son of Nun, sent out of Shittim two men to spy, what, secretly, saying, Go view the land. What? Even Jericho. And they went and came into a harlot's house named Rahab. And they lodge there. The first point we see, we see a call girl. Yeah, we, we right in the text. We see a call girl. Here's the two nuggets. Uh, we see the uh, obliteration and we see her occupation. Yeah, we see the obliteration and we see her what? Occupation. In the text, now notice verse 1 says, Joshua sent out two men. Because two was always better than one. Jesus also sent out his disciples two by two to give them extra support. But church, if no one else wants to go for the Lord... We have to learn to go by ourselves. You see, a question was asked in the Old Testament. Who will go for us? Isaiah said, here I am, Lord. Send me. I'll go. Because in this Christian walk, we have to go when we might not want to go. We got to go when we seem mad. We got to go when we seem sad. We got to go when it's uncomfortable. We got to go when the adversity is in the house. We got to go. Touch your neighbor and say, you got to go. But here, but here, but here, here, Joshua, he sent out two to spy out the land in Jericho. This is where we see the obliteration. See, and the word obliteration means to destroy. It means to what? Wipe out. You see, God's people were about to enter into Canaan and claim their promised land. Wish I had some Bible readers. But the first city they would have to face was the great walled city of what? 
Jericho. If they could take on Jericho, they could easily split up the country and conquer the north and conquer the south. God had already determined that Jericho would fall. God had always promised destruction upon the cities. How many know if the Lord promised it, he's able to keep it. If God has already said it, he's able to settle it. So why are you whining? Why are you crying? Put your trust so, so, so these spies, these, these spies, they went into Jericho. Here it is. Then the text says they went into an harlot's house named Rahab. And, and, and they what? They lodge there. They stopped by Rahab house. But here is the problem. Most Rahab was in business for herself. Wish I had some help right there, y'all. She had her own business. When they checked her W-2, when they looked at her rapid refund, it said, uh, call girl. Her occupation was a call girl. She was a, a harlot, which means she was a prostitute. Text says that now. Look, the text says they went into a harlot's house named Rahab. Notice now. She is singing out by her profession. A harlot's house named Rahab. Church, remember, whatever we do is what the world will call us. If you lie all the time, they gonna call you a liar. If you got a problem drinking, they gonna call you a drunk. If you got a problem always gossiping on the telephone, they gonna call you a gospel. Because people don't listen to what you say, they watch what you do. So, so they went. To Jericho, look, look, to spy out the land, but wind up over a cold girl's house named Rahab. But church, just remember now, the world call you a name. Just because they call your name doesn't mean that we're, what you will always be in life. Because it's not how you start off, but how you finish the race. God know how to change your situation. Jacob will change to Israel. Saul was chained to Paul. So don't let anybody determine your destination but God because your condition is not your conclusion. Anybody glad God changed your situation? Anybody glad God your situation? We was on our way to hell like 95 going north. But the grace of God saved us. So not only, not only do we see a calm girl, but point number two, we going to see a converted girl. Somebody said God going to change. He will change now. But look, we see a converted girl. Watch now. And we know she's converted, Lewis, because she hid and because she heard. Wish I had some help right there. She hid and then she heard. Somebody say, listen up. She hid and then she what? Heard. Look at verses 2 through 11. It says, and it was told the king of Jericho, saying, behold, there came men in hither tonight of the children of Israel to search out the country and the king of the Jer and the king of Jericho sent unto Rahab saying bring forth the men they are come to thee which are enter into thy house for they be come to search out all the country and the women took the two men and hid them and said thus there came men unto me but I was not whence they were and it came to pass about the time was shutting the gate when it was dark that the men went out whither they went when I would not pursue after them quickly, for ye should overtake them. But she had brought them up to the roof of her house and hid them with the stalks of flocks, which she had laid in order upon the roof. And the men pursued after them the way to Jordan unto the forest. And soon as they which pursued after them were gone out, they shut the gate. And before they were laid down, she came up upon them upon the roof. And she said unto the men, I know that the Lord had given you the land, and that terror is fallen upon us, and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. For we have heard, listen, listen to him, we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you. When you came out of Egypt, and, and what you did unto the two kings of the Amorites, that you were up on the other side of Jordan, Shiham and Og, whom you utterly destroyed. And as soon as we had heard these things, our heart didn't melt. Neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and in on earth 
beneath. Look, look, church. Somebody told the king of Jericho that they saw two men going into Rahab's house at night. Which should remind all of us somebody sees what we're doing. Touch the name and say, God knows. Touch the name and say, God knows. Church, 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 church. He even knows our thoughts. How many know whatever you thought, whatever you think, you're going to act on it sooner or later? Talking about, I just can't believe him. I, I just can't believe her. Wait a minute, sister sanctified, brother big stuff. If it had not been for the grace of God, you would be in the same situation. So don't you ever think you can't fall just like somebody else. But I thank God we serve a God who he look beyond our faults and see all of, the, all of my needs because I had some situation in my life. But I thank God, I don't care about being criticized, I serve a God who looked, and he looks beyond all our faults, and he see our needs. Look, 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 look. So when these men, look, look, these two spies, here it is, came to the city, they went into Rahab's house. And this is how we knew she was converted, because she changed Look at verse 4. It says, and the woman took the men, and she, was, she hid them. Look at the change. She was in business for herself at first, but now she's in business for the Lord. The text says she hid the men. She hid God's men before she was looking for a prophet, but now she's helping God's people. Y'all missed it. She was looking for a prophet, but, but now she's helping God's people. And church, we have been, if you've been changed now, we can't afford to let the old us show back up. Watch, 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 watch. Look what God showed me. Church, she hid them upon the roof. You see, even when the enemy looking for you, somebody you don't even know. We're high just. Come on, somebody. See, if you trust in God, when the enemy is on your feet, tail, if you put your trust in God, you can run into a stranger house. And they will. Come on, somebody. Hide you. Look, look, look. She, she, she hid him on the roof. Watch, watch, watch. And she told the soldiers, yay, they came by him. But I don't know where they had went. See, Rahab was smooth. Watch, 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 watch the text now. Normally, soldiers would have checked out the house anyway. But they took her at her word. Why? It is teaching moment because when you really know the person who you are talking to, you believe in them. Y'all didn't get that. Y'all didn't get that. Here it is, Sister Gary. Some of the scholars say it wasn't the first time they had been by. Can I just teach the text? And if I can use my sanctified imagination, the king probably gave orders to bring back the list of every man that has been over to Rahab's house. But when the soldier showed up, and asked for the list. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ram told them, I told y'all they was gone. And do you really want me to list everybody? And the soldier probably said, No problem, Rahab. We believe. No Not only was she hiding the men. She was also hiding some information that you had on the soldier. Even when the enemy tried to get you, God got some information that the enemy can't respond to if you put your trust in God. So look, 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 look. So she hid. She hid them. Look, 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 look. But this converted girl, here it is. She also heard. Look, look, look at verse 9. It says, 9 says, verse 9 said, if I can find it. It says, and she said unto me, I know that the Lord has given you the land. 
and that the terror is fallen upon us, and that all the hands of the land think because of you. Here's the ten. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water. Look at verse 11. And as soon as we had heard these things, she was a corn girl at first. But when she heard about the Lord, he changed her life. She said, I heard what the Lord can do. That's why we have to tell somebody about what the Lord ha has done for you. You see, I said I wasn't going to tell nobody, but I couldn't keep it to myself. What the Lord ha has done for me. And if God done something good for you, baby, how can you hold it to yourself? You got to tell somebody how you went up every day. You got to tell somebody how you still got your job. You got to tell somebody how you still got one or two dollars in your pocket. You got to tell the story to the world. When, 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 when she heard, it changed her whole attitude. It changed her situation. How many know faith coming by? Hearing by the word of God. Here it is. When this young girl heard, she said, their hearts melted. Her heart melted. You see, true change must start in the heart. Because whatever a man thinks is in his heart, so is he. In other words, she was telling these men, I have met a lot of men in my life. Tall, short, fat, skinny, good hair, bald headed. I have not met a lot of men in my life. But when I met the Lord, I realized there was nobody that can do me like Jesus. Nobody can do me like the Lord. See, when you meet God, when you truly been changed, baby, can't nobody do you like Jesus. Can't nobody do you like the Lord. Church, she was converted. Touch your neighbor said, There must be a change. Tell them there must be a change. Number one, we going home. Number one, it says, we see the corn girl. Somebody say corn girl. Corn girl. See the obliteration. And we see her what? Occupation. Occupation. Number two, we see the converted girl. Yes, she hid and she heard. But point number three, we see the concerned girl. Somebody say, are you concerned? We see a concerned girl. In church, you ought to be concerned about your salvation. Don't be too concerned about the choir, what they singing. They ain't sounding good. You better make sure you saved. Oh, they off, they off key today. You better make sure you saved. You better get on key before he close. I was. We see a converted girl. But look, 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 look. We see a concerned, concerned girl. We know the concern was for her family, and it, repl it was replaced by favor. Watch, 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 watch now. We, it was, it, we know the concern was for her family, and the concern was replaced by favor. Look at, look at 12 through 14. We're going home. It says, verse 12 through 14, Sister Range. It says, now, therefore, I pray you, swear. Somebody say swear. Swear unto me by the Lord, since I have shown you kindness, that ye will also show kindness unto my father's house. And give me a true token. Somebody say true token. True token. And that ye will save alive my father and my mother and my brethren and my sisters and all that they have and deliver our life from death. And the man answered her, our life for yours. If you order not this our business, and it should be when the Lord has given us the land that we will deal kindly and truly with thee. Church, look at a concerned girl, Sister Bill. She told them, I showed y'all kindness, Sister Darby. I need you to show me some kindness. Right. As well, don't just look at me, right. but I need you to look out for my family. Yeah. Yeah. My daddy, my, 
my mama, yes, my brother, my sister, yes, my uncle.